Did you hear from Yusuf? Um, Yusuf is here. Oh, great. Oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> Tiny on my computer. Well, thanks for thanks for availing yourself. <laughs> Yusuf, hey, it's have... good to have you. <laughs> and good to see you. Where are you? Are you far away? I'm in Nashville. Wow. Well, happy yeah. spring. Thank you. It's actually just as cool or cold or dry or wet or whatever as it was at home. So it looks pretty, just a little chilly. Uh huh. Uh -huh. It's nice here. So, Ray, it sounds like we think this is everyone for now. This is everybody for now. I think we'll be okay. able to, um, that we can plug Andy in if he comes in. I, he's the one that would be late. Okay. So, I guess we call the meeting to order at 6.03. And I think we've already heard everyone's voice and we see everyone's picture. So that's working. Um, all right, I, uh, roll call. Well, we know who's here. I don't know if we really have to do an official roll call, but do we have a notes taker? Anyone willing to take notes? Yeah, I can do that again. Great, thank you very much. And this is, I, I don't know how many people have have uh, checked their email here today. Sorry to butt in, Carolyn. I'm, the That's other fine. thing, Matt, that, that we have also done is Carolyn is now a chair. Um, I, I did send the copy. Andy Andy has been apologizing to me about not getting the, the minutes from the last meeting, uh, but he did get that to me. He sent that to me yesterday. I shared it with you all today to be able to see uh, what he was able to put together from that last set of set of uh, minutes. Uh, Anyone get a chance to read that through that? I was just reading it right now, although I can't really vote on it because I wasn't there. Uh -huh. um, it appears that uh, he left in uh, a, 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 a section from a different set of minutes from the, the CPA committee to do with approval right. of the minutes. So so that should be deleted. Yeah, I don't think we can. Yeah, so also, I guess we just go and approve I'm it. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if Amy Rusecki was at your meeting or if that was also from the CPA meeting. Do you remember, Ray, was that uh, February or was that January? <laughs> Um, I don't think I don't think Amy was at. These are the notes from 10th of January. Yeah, I don't think those were. I don't think that these public comment. I don't think Amy Rizeki was at the. The, oh, the January, January meeting. meeting. Okay, so I guess we're not going to vote on the uh, approving the minutes, but he'll he'll update them and send them back out again. Is that how it works? Yes. Okay. Um, one member has already reached out to him about a about a couple of procedural pieces in there also. So thank you for pointing that out. Okay. Uh, there's no public. Is there anyone else in the wings there that we should be calling on or opening the floor to? Looks like there's eight oh, people. Yes, we have. We do have uh, two people as attendees. One is, well, we have two people as attendees. Okay. And Amy is one of them. And we have public comment on the agenda for now. I don't know what that stands for. Is that anything so or? That would be an opportunity for any member of the public if they wanted to. Uh, uh, if they wanted to share or ask any questions, if they had any public comment they would like to bring to our attention now, if there are any attendees in the room that have anything, uh, 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 raise your hand and we can introduce you. Otherwise, otherwise we can proceed into the commission meeting. Okay. I have no requests for comment. All right. So the first item is pickleball. Okay, so um, uh, the first section on the agenda here today is basically our our large. Uh, 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 it's 
I, I appreciate Carolyn for being involved and involving herself with the the uh, pickleball petitioners. She has met uh, online and in person a couple of times with the uh, with the pickleball group that pushed forward the proposal last year for CPAC. Um, and so I, I appreciate Carolyn's doing that because my encouragement for the commission is that uh, we start to uh, involve ourselves with those large public projects. You all are sort of a liaison between the community and our programming and our department. Uh, I, I, uh, I think that it's important. I'm comfortable saying that, that we are in the process as I've shared with the commission here before. I'm comfortable saying that we are uh, making progress, slow progress, but we're making progress towards making their vision happen. Uh, it's important for me that they also have multiple uh, uh, ears to, to ask questions of so that it doesn't have to be my just telling them in case I'm wrong, in case, in case we need to spread that uh, pressure out in, in different uh, avenues. And so I asked if uh, they would mind my connecting them, Carolyn and uh, Barbara and Joyce. Uh, and I think that's a productive use of, of commission resources. I'm not involved in that conversation. Carolyn certainly can share as we have met also on what some of their requests and the information they're looking for as to how to advance their project's interests. Um, we are still, when I say slow progress, it is still uh, uh, we're still looking at sites. We're still looking at cost estimates of those sites. Um, we're looking at what the what the uh, most appropriate next steps are. We have a couple of ideals I've shared with you before, but uh, we have a couple of ideal spaces that we are looking at for a lot of reasons, which may be more expensive and more long-term projects. We're also looking at the viability of of maintaining our, our, our goals, developing those uh, tennis ball courts where the temporary pickleball is right now and turning that into the forever home for pickleball. Um, the, you know, the, the process right now, it's not stuck. I don't believe that it's stuck right now. We just now are looking for ways to advance to the next process. And Carolyn, as a commission representative, myself in my communications with DPW, with Town Hall, and with the uh, pickleball group, which is not, they're not, uh, you know, they're not a voice that actually has weight in this process right now, other than being, now they've moved back into a general public, uh, uh, public, public uh, uh, request for information and for guidance and for, for uh, uh, you know, some updates. But in our conversations with them, I believe that we are moving in a direction that, that makes pickleball uh, a, a thing of our future. Uh, you know, as for right now, I can say that we are still uh, we are still working on on as soon as the spring comes officially, and as of twenty minutes ago, spring is here. Um, uh, as uh, as soon as our spring season begins, and that's the next conversation we have with DPW. Also, as soon as spring uh, brings people back out to our fields and to our courts and to all of this. We are now in the process of trying to get um, uh, equipment and and uh, uh, maintenance for those temporary courts while we figure out what we're doing. Sanjay, I, I saw your hand raised. Yep, thanks, Ray. I just wanted to confirm: no, no plans have been set. There is no plan, but we do not the, have the, the definite but, site. But the thinking is to turn the two court, two tennis courts, existing tennis courts at Mill River into the home for pickleball. Is that what I heard? Yes. And it could be two spots. It could be one spot. If we can, we, we heard this commission, uh, 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 Amy and I, when we spoke about this and spoke about this with our, with uh, uh, town hall, um, you know, we heard this commission in December 
speaking about uh, the the one thing I heard I took away from that meeting more than anything was an interest in making sure that if we do pickleball, we do pickleball correctly. We do pickleball and they, they have space that they can operate in. So that's the, that is a focus that I want to try and keep on the, on the table here that we don't end up just finding a space on the side of somebody else's existing space and make that, make that, uh, 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 you know, sort of, sort of make it work for whatever it is. We want there to be a pickleball space here. And so the, the connection with tennis as to whether or not we we remove tennis from that from that site, which is not ideal, whether we accommodate tennis in that site and still give pickleball its own space. That's the if it was as simple as just saying we're going to get rid of tennis, we probably would have done that already. But I don't think that we want to give up something that we haven't really tested out to see what the impact would be. Um, and so our process right now is in cost estimates of the different sites and also programming estimates of what we lose if we if we make the decision to to like the easiest decision because there's there's tennis courts there and it involves still some modification but the easiest thing would be just to say those tennis courts are pickleball and we're going to get rid of tennis at that site but I'm not prepared to make that decision now, nor nor is anybody that's making decisions on this. We're not prepared to make that decision right now without knowing exactly what we're gaining, what we're losing. Um, the well, other sites, which I think are fantastic, do involve more money and more long-term investment. And that's where our, our research, that's where uh, DPW and engineering research comes in to establishing that, that uh, estimate. Carolyn, I see your hand. Yeah, I just want to clarify um, in response to Sanjay's comment that I think, if I'm not mistaken, that that uh, Mill River is being looked at as a temporary space. It may become permanent, but the bigger picture really is Cowfield, Groff Park, whatever. Maybe even the other side still of the Mill River parking lot. Um, it's not that we're going to turn the tennis courts into pickleball courts and stop. I think there's no bottom to the, the list of interested people. I think they have something like 400 people on their, on their list for Amherst or some of them are, most of them are Amherst residents. Um, I don't think we could have too many pickleball courts. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do is look at the next step and how much we can get for the money we've got and where we will put them. And as soon as possible, because they first came to us two, two and a half years ago, I, I would think it was. Um, and I, you know, I think it's just prudent of us to push for resolution as soon as possible because they're waiting. So it's, it's a bigger picture than Mill River, but who knows when or where. Square? Okay. I, I was under the impression we were further ahead. That's why I was a little surprised. But um... Yeah, I, I always thought the 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 tennis court was just a temporary place for it while we figured out, you know, another area. That is that is the plan right now, as far as I know. Um, it will be, I mean, it's I guess it's somewhat it's possible it could be the only one, but there's a budget for more. So I think when there's money for something else, there will be something else. I'm not sure how long it'll take, but they are planning on using the Mill River area immediately or as soon as we can get nets over there Those so at least we can courts. say there's something and this is the time where we can really sort of test as i was sharing with with pickleball last fall when we first laid the lines down this is the time where we can start to experiment with getting nets out there and seeing what the what the uh how it how it cooperates with tennis the culture of pickleball the culture of tennis uh, uh how many people we can start measuring that because as the weather gets nice and we have nets out there the only people who use it right now or have used it in the fall as it started to get cold as we move towards hibernation are people who have their own nets and many pickleball folks do have their own nets and their own rackets or what have you but uh now is a chance for us to see a little bit more as to whether or not uh, there is sort of a, 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 you know, how extensive that culture goes beyond those pickleball fanatics and whether or not we can, we can do some, uh, uh, we talked a little bit, Carol and I were brainstorming earlier today about potentially doing, doing a little 
a, a intro or training session for vacation camp kids or what have you to start to start uh, introducing pickleball as part of the language of recreation would be this would be a, a the process of of this spring for us to see if it has a home in our in our in our thought process in our in our general in our general state Sanjay. Yep. Thanks, Ray, and thanks, Carolyn, for the clarification. I let me say I'm impressed by the way the pickleballers have organized themselves, and I'm sure there are a lot of them out there. Uh, um, and I think uh, a temporary solution at Mill River does not sound unreasonable. Uh, I'd like to point out a couple things. First of all, you may find I. I don't know, but you may find that all of a sudden there are a lot of tennis players and that they're very well organized when something gets taken away from them. Um, that in general, I would hope as a department, as an and, and as a town, uh, we could avoid reducing one recreational opportunity into in order to provide another. Um, and uh, and I think though, yeah, those are just the things I would like to get publicly on the record, my observations about this interim solution. Um, I don't know if I don't know if the existing tennis players know this is coming or not, or may just have a lingering sense that it's coming from the spray painted lines that appeared on what they probably think of as their courts. Uh, but I suspect that there will be some surprise tennis players and that you may wind up hearing from some of them. Uh, Ray, you, you probably are as aware of, as anyone that the <laughs> The indications are that tennis players and pickleballers will not get along very well. <laughs> and, uh, like, and it, it's like this golf and regular golf, you know. <laughs> no, but you know what? It's funny that when we first heard about it, I had no idea what it was. I had to Google it during our meeting. Um, but, um, you know, now it's at every resort that you go to. It's, you know, it's an advertisement. So I, I don't think it's going to be a problem filling those courts or having them being used. Right. Yeah, that's the problem is finding more space. <laughs> so I think Sanjay's right about the tennis players though. And I right. I hope we can find a way to communicate it and and maybe even have to facilitate it. <laughs> Might come to that. I don't know. But I, as long as we can keep the middle school courts open, Sanjay, do you think that will address that at, at all? Well, I think one could reasonably point out to a tennis player that there are uh, six courts available publicly at the middle school um, and that uh, UMass and Amherst College are relatively generous with use of their own tennis courts, although I think not in a, I don't know, but I think not in a formal way. Mm -hmm. um, and there are zero pickleball courts in town right now. So this is a fair right. numerical point to make. Right. <laughs> um, the, the courts at the middle school are used. I mean, where one drew the line for heavily or not heavily, I think is open for debate and depends on mm -hmm. the season and so on. But there are definitely times when either I or other tennis players I know go to the middle school and there is no court available. Mm -hmm. And are there times that those courts are closed to the public? Other than when the high school is playing? Well, I think actually, tech, well, Ray may know better than I are, are. If they're school property, they're closed entirely during the school day. Mm -hmm. Now, of Correct. course, summer is not school day, right? So we're right. talking Correct. about transitional seasons here. But my understanding is that they are not available to the public from sort of 830 to 4 during school session days. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when the team is using it, Amherst Rec schedules camps there um they are right. they're well used and again i I'm, i don't have numerical data but they're the times at which people try to play tennis there and there is no court available those that event that event exists <laughs> sorry for i don't know what happened i got everybody froze on me in the middle of sanjay saying something but i think i kind of figure where we are right now um Sorry, Ray, if I could, just to be totally clear, I'm not at all suggesting we not provide opportunities for pickleballers. I like sports. I like every sport. There should be more sports. I'm just sounding a little bit of a warning about um, the about mm -hmm. 
what happens when you take something away from one group to provide yeah. for another group. True. And I, I think that that was a very, very important perspective for me to hear in December when we had the meeting. And I know yours was one of the voices that sort of said that you're echoing or, or adding to what you had said before about that. I thought you did a nice job of speaking for, that's you as a commission, did a nice job of speaking for pickleball, but also making sure that we don't just run run tennis out of a position where they're where where we say we're gonna we're gonna uh, uh, we will sacrifice tennis in a space. I wouldn't make the decision to do that if it was uh, you know if if there wasn't some weight placed on what we were losing in that in the first place. But I think I think that that is an important uh, that's an important voice for the tennis community there and the people who historically have used, even if it's a smaller number there than it's been in the past, even if there are fewer people using that space for tennis. And I don't know for sure that there are my sense of it, my the anecdotal sense that I get about the courts are that it used to have a lot more people on there, but that doesn't mean that, that the few now are, are, uh, you know, we need to sort of remove them because they're not, there aren't as many of them anymore. Um, it's important that we do meet those concerns before we make that decision. Uh, and I heard the commission saying that uh, uh, when Amy and I spoke about it and then spoke about it with the, with town hall, I think it was clear that we had heard you uh, speaking in, in, in that area. Thanks, Ray. I'm sorry uh, to interrupt, but just wanted to let folks know that I joined. I got here about quarter after, and I've been listening since I got on. I was off video while I was eating, but I, at the risk of, or I hate asking people to repeat, but have we um, made the decision then that we would be for temporary? Okay, so so the temporary deployment of pickleball at Mill River is still up for debate. It, the temporary, it is still our temporary site. We still have it lined. We are going to invest in bringing pickleball programming there, seeing what we need to do about, about sharing space in the meantime, while we're looking for forever home, just how to manage the two of them in the same space for the, for that transitional period of time. Is that a short period of time? Is it a long period of time? That is that's what our attention is going to be, be on in the springtime. Um, and so we're going to have nets out there uh, that, we can, that we can share with the public in the springtime. We're going to, if we need to set aside time and manage times because there's an overlap that doesn't work for people as we get certainly into the summertime, um, uh, towards the end of the school year, and when people, when those two ecosystems collide, if we need to manage time and scheduling out there, we can do that. But when to see what the organic uh, over, overlay is on those courts first, if there's if if they need management, if there's a if there's uh, a sense that either one needs more space or more time, then we can try and get involved with that. But the uh, uh, but in terms of a, a final decision on where pickleball is going to be, that is the that's our next. Uh, that's the next progression in the conversation. Okay, I have a, a quick temporary thought. Then, so we have how many nets? Two two nets that we use set up. We don't have any out there right now. We don't have any pickleball nets. It has been pickleball users who bring their own in the fall when we line the courts. Pickleball users, the, they, a lot of a lot of pickleball uh, aficionados have have nets of their own portable nets they can come okay. and prop up and use there we are two like courts available though right? there are there two, are two, courts, two available. courts available yeah i guess my question is um as a temporary solution would you could you just take two courts from the high school instead of or from the middle school instead of here just um it's been a while since i played tennis but i, I will say i always like going to middle river because of the shade um that it was just more right. pleasant to play in there than um at the middle school which Kind of the sun is beating down on you and if it's two courts you know you could either take out all of mill river or you could take out part of the of the middle school um you know provided we could 
get access to the middle school. So, so I guess that's another potential consideration, at least, I don't know, maybe for the summer. That that's such a, I think that's a great suggestion. It's such a great suggestion that I think, I, you know, my first response was, why didn't I think about about that? Um, the <laughs> the the uh, I think my my response to that would be because tennis camps here at the middle school, uh, I, I, because there is a the uh, because tennis camps use all of those courts during the day, and then and then. Uh, you know, there's there. Uh, I think the overlap with with uh, programming on the tennis courts at the high at the middle school are the reason why that wasn't our first thought for it. Um, but I mean, that still is a that still is a fair conversation to be had. Thanks. Um, okay, um, I think it's my responsibility to get us moving on because we're almost out of time in our agenda for this section. And Caroline, other than that, sorry. well, I see Sanjay has something else to say. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I'll I'll do my best to be quick. Um, the the I would I would strongly warn Ray again against using the middle school courts for pickleball. I think, and again, I'm not I happen to play tennis. I am not the no pickleball camp. I think there should be pickleball. They've done a great job advocating for themselves. I'm just trying to make us aware and your department aware, Ray, of what you may face. The one sort of technical issue with the middle school courts is that they were resurfaced with a grant from USTA five or six mm. years ago. And I, I don't know any of the financial or contractual history of that, but um, there, there could be an issue. So the tennis- I know, it ha I know it happened. I don't know any of the ramifications of, on, on our use of it. Yeah, and uh, the other thing about that is also we spent money on lining the the mill the the mill uh, uh, tennis courts with the temporary lines, and that I mean that that did cost us labor hours, paint, and so it would it would take again another project to move lines out there. If this looks like something that that is going to take a while then at the very least we can keep that in mind as a as a po possible alternative to make sure that there is enough space if if there was a sense that tennis needed more space at mill we could look at that and try and phase back we could go back to the drawing board if we choose one of those long-term projects for the pickleball site to move off of either of those two sites then maybe the uh, what i hear uh andy's uh, uh question there um uh, you know, insight there is to maybe using that at the middle school is not to say that that's going to be at all a forever home, but that if you if you want to try and you know uh, limit the amount of tennis that you move and move away, then maybe putting it in a place where there's a lot more tennis, there's a lot more tennis courts, uh, would make more sense. Giving a couple of courts over there, I don't know how, uh, I, I don't know how much we need. To move off of the mill site right now, I don't know if it's incompatible or anything like that. Uh, but I do know that that because those lines are down over there right now, we're committed to making that work for temporary space. Um, should I transition, Carolyn? I think yeah. I think if we can move on, um, if everyone else is satisfied, then we can go on to youth empowerment. And in the meantime, I have to plug in my computer, so if I look okay. like I'm moving all over the place, that's why. <laughs> now, youth empowerment is the space that is. Uh, uh, I think there's it's it's less concrete if there's, if that's possible. It's less concrete right now than the pickleball details. Youth, Empower Youth Empowerment Center is essentially, it is a conversation. The best way I can describe it is this is a conversation that uh, has been restarted. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in a conversation. I personally uh, wanted to kickstart this conversation again. It was about a month or two ago. It's probably two months ago. It's in January, I believe, where we... Uh, we wanted to, myself, a couple of town councilors sat down to say, what do we need to do to get this, get the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the youth empowerment, which has been a pet project, I think, of 
some of the town councilors, certainly of members of the community who also have been pushing for that large and integrated uh, 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 plan for the town for years. Uh, that also received ARPA funding last year. And uh, I, I want to I want to sort of uh, provide you with a general capsule of what this is. I don't know if it's if recreation is where it ends up. I don't know if it ends up underneath our umbrella. I don't know if it's something that that I have a major role in it going forward. I may have a very small role in it going forward. There are places where their interests are adjacent to ours, but the Youth Empowerment Center grew out of the uh, 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 the CSWG, the, the working group, the community safety working group that was established in the wake of the George Floyd uh, Minneapolis uh, uh, tragedy. Um, and so the town of Amherst, uh, in looking at a number of different facets of how our town operates, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, 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 first responders, how we how we uh, ensure public safety and equity and public safety. Looked at a lot of different things about community involvement, and one of the places where they where they pushed hard for with the town and with the town's involvement was in developing a youth empowerment center. The vision at the time was that there is going to be a sort of building with with programming in it that basically uh, 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 looks at uh, BIPOC students in particular at cultural uh, fluency, at academic integrity and health, that looks at uh, programming that 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 provides uh, you know whole whole mind, whole brain uh, development for students who sometimes get lost in in the uh, in the systems that we have here. One of those systems is mine, so I understand why why people would be. Uh, 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 concerned or worried when recreation was involved in the process of making that that uh, youth empowerment center work. That there are systems in the town that have lost children, lost lost members of the community to uh, in in the sort of in the shuffle. Uh, that would be recreation. That would be the schools. That would be uh, in some ways our our. First responders that that people basically are are the relationship between members of the community and the town can be strengthened. The youth empowerment center was one uh, to basically make it uh, as brief as I can. The youth empowerment center is one of the the most important tools towards answering those problems. Um, uh, and so inside of that vision of having a building with professionals that can speak that can do programming that helps to helps to counter some of the historical and and community community issues that that uh, uh, you know, that that young people in the town may face without a place to do without a, without things to get involved with and without a connection to those programs that are trying to reach out to to them the 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 programs inside of that building uh, now, it's going to cost a lot of money to build a building, to create a building and to create space or to convert some space. Uh, it's going to take a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of, not that it's impossible, but we want, instead of looking way down the road and looking at all of those pieces, we wanted myself and the counselors I spoke to wanted to try and talk about uh, what we need to do to create some of the programs, get some of the programming going while the town figures out what to do with that ARPA money. Um, uh, uh, if we can come up with a picture of what that that programming looks like, and and uh, you know trying to put together a working group, I think where we are right now is the town is going to be building a a working group. I'm not in charge of that group. I may be a part of it, but the town is going to be building. I think I'm a part of it, but uh, uh, the town may be building a working group that can that can work on the next stages of that youth empowerment center there are some places that are adjacent to our interests 
there are some places where recreational interests are definitely met here of having a drop-in center about having recreational uh, activities that are worthwhile for for students and are equitable and are and are uh, challenging and are inclusive and they, that they speak to the needs of the community as the community has already stated and will continue to state what the interests are. Uh, um, uh, but I did want to just share with you that that pivot here to building that group uh, will still be looking for rec recreation, recreational involvement. I'm right now and I share with Carolyn that I may be backing out. There's, I'm trying to investigate how to move myself out of a director's role in it for a couple of reasons. Number one, because I don't want it to be seen by the community, by the town, by my staff as being, this is a project that is necessarily going to take, put youth empowerment under the recreational department. My involvement from the very beginning was to, was to essentially say there are rec interests and I have uh, I have personal and and professional interests in a project like this that are partially attached to my work here in recreation. There are pieces under the, underneath the umbrella of a youth empowerment center that are recreational, but there are also pieces that go beyond what we do. If it was done under recreation, I'd need a lot of resources, a lot of staff, a lot of funding to be able to bring in to be able to bring in. Uh, 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 People, it may be social services, it may be uh, therapy and psychology, it may be tutorial or or job training sort of things that involve all this. I would have to make sure that I have the resources to make that work out of recreation. And I don't know that that necessarily happens unless it's brought into a, a, a larger picture. I don't think I can just take it on and say, hey, now that we have it, can I get a lot of money? Um, and so, so one reason why I may be backing out of a directorial, out of a out of a guidance role in that is that the other reason is because we have a massive turnover in my department, which I have been responsible for doing a lot more than my job for the last month, two months here. And I will be continuing to do that. And so now is not the best time for me to be spending spending uh, uh, my energy and resources in a direction that may not long term be a recreation department. Uh, uh, program or recreation department benefit. I love to be involved. I'd love to stay involved, but I don't know that I'm going to be directing that. They do need recreational involvement. And so I uh, I think that's the pitch that I need to make here. Um, uh, as I mentioned with Carolyn and getting involved with the pickleball group, which is a smaller scale version of what this youth empowerment center would be. This is my this is my encouragement to uh, commission members to make themselves available. You can reach out to me individually and I can connect you with people both in town hall and in the community, but I could, I could basically put you into a listening position that could become something bigger if you want it to be, but into a listening position and access for members of the community that I think need our support. Uh, and so this is my encouragement for for members here to think about getting involved, making themselves uh, available for that push, which I think begins in earnest in March, April here. How did I do? <laughs> so let's um, just say someone someone will get in touch with you if they're interested in being that connection between this commission and that group, because. Yeah, I guess you have to think about it. I think, does everyone know enough about it, um, do you feel like, to make a commitment of any kind, or do you need to know more? Questions or comments? Okay. I, I will say, like, I, I, I don't know a ton. I know what Ray shared in the last couple of meetings. Um, and then also, I will just say that that if this is certainly a March, April, May type of time frame, I'm, I'm I don't have the, the time to uh, to vote. I am okay. very familiar with your with your work schedules and your commitments. I am I am far from if if anything to a fault. I'm I'm not going to tell you I need you to do this. I'm I don't I don't. Uh, again, I appreciate Carolyn's 
being uh, Carolyn's willingness as our chair to reach out to the pickleball group. Again, like I said, that is a relatively speaking, that's a small scale version of what we're talking about here. It, youth empowerment has a has a potential to become much bigger, much broader uh, than the than the push for pickleball facilities, and it and it affects a a larger uh, uh, cross section of the community, and so that could be like our little uh, microcosm, a test case. I don't need somebody to get in involved right now, and you know. If I bring it up again at our next uh, commission meeting, it's not because I'm badgering you all to get involved. I would like to just keep you all informed on what that process is and what they're looking to do. Uh, um, there'll be people who you've already, like you've already put some, put more thought into this than perhaps some people who will be involved in the process later on. So it's not like, it's not like you have to get in and steer the, the situation, but as far as recreational interests are here, I I uh, I think it's important that that uh, uh, you know where there's an overlap between youth empowerment and recreation, that recreation is heard. And we also have two or three new commission members hopefully coming on board in the next couple of months, and you know maybe there'll be someone there that, especially with three years ahead of them, mm -hmm. um, is willing to get involved. I am also, and that's that actually I could I could introduce that right now because I don't think I have it on the agenda, but uh, we I think we have the two open seats. I'd share with you that Sarah Ewell, uh, easy come, easy go, that uh, Sarah Ewell did have to uh, back out because she had a fantastic promotion at work and she sent her regrets. Um, but that leaves us with two positions open and those two positions, I believe, might be confirmed tonight. I'm hoping that they're confirmed tonight because uh, um, um, I think we have to put those forward to the to the council's vote to have them confirmed to the commission. Uh, but we'll be looking again when in the summertime when Yusuf and Carolyn's terms are up, we'll be looking again to fill commission roles. And so if you know people, I now kind of have a better sense for uh, for how to go out and, and recruit people in. But if you know people who might be interested in being involved, we will be looking to try and fill spaces again, relatively soon. Okay. So that gets us on to the next one, capital requests. And that's a really quick, easy one. We're five minutes, that's good. I can, I can basically summarize by saying that most of our requests this year, our departmental requests were essentially a, a uh, updated van, our van is in tough shape. Uh, and we also have an extension of signage. We have a, a last year's request for town signage. We're, we're connected to uh, Town Hall. Brianna Sunrid uh, has, uh, and Dave Zomick have started a push to try and unify some of our, our recreation uh, property signage. And so we'll be working. We'll be working on that. That was part of last year's request. But most of our requests this year were Cherry Hill related. Um, we're related to operations at Cherry Hill. So I think the most public serving, public facing piece of that is the parking lot, uh, which you know some of it is sort of getting into the. It's the equipment interests, uh, you know, equipment that was basically we got in '86 and had a 15 year lifespan and we're still working we're still operating with them um, but in terms of the parking lot we are working on the solution it hasn't been finalized yet but we obviously we need to fix that parking lot for people who've been out there uh, whether it's a, a, a sort of transitional fix for us here where we're going to be asking for more later on or whether we say look we're going to we're going to try and do this right and and really uh, uh, you know if we want to spend money and really do it right here, then it potentially save us money in the future. That's where that's where capital is is trying to make a decision right now. But we have capital requests that are tied up in Cherry Hill right now, um, and it looked positive in terms of what they gave us. We looked at some that are down the road, but but Cherry Hill uh, equipment and making sure we can continue to match problem, uh, let uh, our our revenue drive our our uh, operations over there match our match our costs with revenue and and allow that to continue to be healthy, as I think it is. Questions? 
fair enough. Uh, we actually are going to have a, this is going to be a very short meeting for us. Is, uh, 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 Carolyn, may I move on to program updates? Is there oh, any oh, sure, transition sure, we need sure. to do? Of course, yeah. And so program updates, uh, uh, originally this was put, this is sort of a modification from our intended February piece. Um, we have, and and I, like some of it feels like it's a long time a long time ago, we got rid of Winterfest. Yay, Winterfest. I thought that was a, a really nice uh, bit for us. Aquatics right now, we are moving into our our basically a full calendar year with Amherst United and our our uh, our swim program, feeder program for the swim team. Uh, we are excited to have gone through a full year of programming there. And we, we think that that's a program that we are very happy with. And and look forward to 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 uh, putting together here for a long time. Uh, we are gearing up as most of what our looks are in the program updates. This is like that thawing out process. We're right in the middle of Bambi here, and it's like Twitter patient. Uh, we 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 uh, we're going to that seasonal change here, and next thing you know, the birds going to be singing, and the grass going to be growing. It's going to be all of the all the fun times. The recreation goes through its little uh, reemergence. And aquatics, we we already are looking at at uh, uh, looking at pools and maintenance of pools. We want to try and run our equipment early here this year and see if we can't make sure that we have no surprises. But um, um, the pools, uh, we are we are looking forward to having those open and operating on time, uh, uh, actively to get our to get our to get our camps running to get uh, we just had our budget meeting this past week and and you know it's it's clear in our revenue where that where war memorial hurt us last year i think that this is a chance for us to again have a full year in the pools and 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 uh, see what that does in a full healthy year knock on wood uh primetime vacation camp uh, this was put in for the for February because we had February camp coming up. I think I'll leave it in here and just say that we are really excited to be offering vacation camp uh, uh, for April for April break. We're already gearing and getting ready for that. Uh, uh, that's always uh, uh, you know sort of a fun time for kids who are on vacation. It's essentially child care over the vacation week, and uh, you know. Grace Marshak has some fantastic uh, 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 operational plans ready for them on site, and some some uh, you bring bring outsiders to the camp doing some activities. She has a a staff of of uh, young folks. A lot of them are from primetime daily operations that are back with her. But we're looking forward to the last big thing of the year. Once vacation camp is done, then it's basically. Uh, normal programming at prime time, but uh, the the April vacation camp is coming up. Uh, 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 AYBL just wrapped. It's it's uh, uh, AYBL is probably our biggest uh, cultural event over the course of the winter. It's our biggest sports event over the over the winter time because of the number of people who are involved in. Because the number of people who uh, participate. That basketball, rec basketball had their championships this past weekend, and now this next weekend they're doing their all stars, and then then the kids are basically transitioning full time into spring sports. Um, and so uh, that's uh, I think AYBL is sort of uh, uh, self fulfilling. They uh, the numbers are down from where it's been pre pandemic, but it uh, I think Jose has done a really nice job of getting them back to a to an operational standpoint. And now spring offerings. We're very similar to last year. We are looking at a few possibilities in here, but we're very similar to what we did last year. We are working right now on trying to secure our summer sports camps. Uh, uh, we have our second year with uh, with baseball, uh, uh, essentially sort of sort of working partially under our umbrella, but certainly. The work that Sanjay and, and Amherst Baseball put into getting access for the middle schools and building a feeder program that will uh, that that will help serve recreational interests of, of providing the high school with uh, ready athletes, people who are 
in terms of their skills, in terms of their ready preparation, especially with the pandemic stuff, to, to be prepared for the high school when they need them. Uh, we, we wanted to make sure that we have that opportunity and uh, uh, lacrosse is fully, we, we have that all registered and ready to go. We're still opening registrations for that as we speak. Um, um, you know, uh, so, so really the spring offerings, what, you know, we're, we're working on getting fields lined, getting fields uh, uh, set up and prepared for them so that when they run out there in April, that they are going to be, uh, they're going to be running out into space that is ready for them. But it is, I think it's an exciting time. Talk to Jose. Jose's, Jose is in uh, go mode right now. Sanjay. Yep, just a quick numerical update. Since this is a program that is sort of a hybrid between Amherst Baseball and Amherst Rec at this point, we have, uh, it looks like right now, we have 14 seventh and eighth graders from the middle school registered for the baseball program. Excellent. Uh, That's and, excellent. That's great numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And then another five or six, a couple of from the Chinese school and a couple of homeschoolers as well who are interested in playing. Um, you may have also heard just to stick to bats and balls for a minute that there is likely to be a junior varsity softball team at the schools this year with uh, I think 21 is the latest number I heard in terms of girls uh, interested in participating in softball. We just had somebody come in today and express interest in in uh, running a and in, in coaching youth softball. And so we're going to investigate that a little bit and see if that's something that there is a market for here. We're trying to like there's a little bit of a hiccup right now with volleyball because volleyball is uh, which is which has certainly been a house for a large number of people for us. Uh, we have instructor transition going on there that we're that we're trying to make sure that we if if there is a market there that we don't drop it because we just aren't prepared to make it make it happen. We had uh, we have had some interest in running a wrestling club, which I'm fascinated by. Uh, I think I think that would be and not just interest in running it, but a lot of sort of uh, grassroots interest in participating in it. And so we may try and. Uh, investigate how to make that operate here, uh, get that going in a in a in a trial sort of season. If Ray, just to follow quick, if you if so, I I call us Amherst baseball a lot. We're also Hadley Amherst softball. So we offer softball programs from ages five to um, twelve. You know, it's just pre That's... middle school. So if someone contacts you about wanting to get involved with youth softball. We have we have an existing program in town, and I'd ha be happy to be their contact point for getting involved. That is perfect. That is Sanjay trying to trying to get involved with another one of those small cases. I, I see you getting involved. Like that's that's commission getting involved. <laughs> trying uh, uh, youth empowerment is big. This one is another one of those nibbles at the side here. If I can, if I have people who are interested in trying to get involved with an existing program or running a program for REC, I will make sure. I, we don't have the infrastructure for REC built in right now. And so I probably would have been reaching out to you, Sanjay, anyways, to find out how to make that happen. You send, me, send me all your bats and balls and skiing people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll take the aquatics, folks. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, and so, I, I mean, our, our roster is pretty, the, the, uh, the, the schedule events is pretty consistent here. I, I think that's, uh, you know, it, it's not old bag yet. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in, uh, just cruise control yet, but, uh, you know, having some familiarity with last spring is helping me feel like this is a little bit more normal than maybe I went into it last year. Uh, Questions, comments, concerns, feedback. I just have a question about Cherry Hill. I know it's, it's going to be opening pretty soon. Uh, are we just going to let it kind of do its own thing and see what happens again? Or do we have anything placed for trying to make more things come out of that? Uh, we tried a couple things late. I think that, uh, first of all, the, the, uh, schedule for us. I, I spoke to John Coelho uh, today and it looks like we, for a while, we were really hoping for an early open. We're, look, we're, open, we're hoping to be able to get out 
one of the reasons why we closed early last year was to tr make sure that our extra help budget would would sustain it if we wanted to open early we usually have more people who are interested in starting as soon as it gets nice out than we have when daylight savings time hits in november and everybody's sort of miserable and just trying to move to the next thing and so we we sacrificed a week at the end of last season to hopefully open up early this year that uh it looks we were we're targeting the april 1st start our target was to try and open at the beginning of April, and then we hit, got hit by three storms in March. And our fear was that that wasn't going to happen. It looks like it may be our target is to be open that second week of April, which just means we get a bunch of time to open up here. So our calendar is not that far off. We aren't that set behind. As you can see, New England complains about snow, but then it comes hard and then it melts almost immediately. Uh, uh, um, in terms of our tinkering around and trying to make some things happen, yes, there are some things that I know I've already started to talk to about putting in the works there. We tried a couple things last year that were that were you know at, towards the end of the season, like a family day. The uh, the women's league was a huge success for us last year, and we're introducing a men's league. We are we are starting the men's league for members this year. And we're we're hoping that we can ride some of the interest in things like that into some success. We started to talk about uh, I talk about again uh, uh, transforming the clubhouse. Uh, we we're going to take a look and see what what the cost was of having uh, uh, moderate uh, uh, moderate energy over the course of the winter time being used up there, and see if we can't. Uh, uh, Jose and I have been have been working on trying to find programming for that that would be available to to monetize uh, Cherry Hill in the off season, but then also to try and invite bring some invitation in for the for the season here, but especially for our off season planning when uh, when when we want to try and try and keep that space available to the public. Right now, we don't see it being a community center, of course. We don't see it as being a place where people are going to go and hang out if there's not something that's drawing them to specifically. But we are looking at the possibilities of reintroducing food, reintroducing some uh, 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 sort, of, sort of draws and gifts and some, uh, some uh, you know, uh, prize raffles, trying to do some, uh, uh, do some attractions to bring people into the, into the space. You're talking about off season or or the golf during season? the season during the season. Okay, uh, but we uh, there. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna, is is there any thought about maybe getting a, a group of people involved? Because obviously, you guys only have so many people there, <laughs> and you can't the concentrate last... on the golf course. So... You know what I mean? Like normally, a golf course you, you have a golf professional. You know, you have people running a golf course, and that's all they do. And obviously, mm -hmm. we don't have that luxury in town, so. You know, maybe so, it's something that we can get some volunteers to help, at least the brainstorming and, and some programming and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, we ended last season looking at ways to involve, I spoke to the Mill District in particular about their uh, two-pronged, their interest in cross-promotion and then also their interest in helping us transform the clubhouse and being involved in cross promotion for our for our departmental interests but then also being a part of as you're describing being a part of a, a you know sort of community panel of people that can look at at you know redressing at uh, at tidying up at at uh, uh, making services out of the clubhouse so um, i am giving myself a note to to uh, uh, you know restart that conversation here also and see where we are. Okay. Um, ready to move on, right? All set? I am. Everybody I am. else? Okay. Um, I'm gonna need to leave in about five minutes, so. Okay. You know. Yeah, I. the only thing I know we have to talk about still, if there's no other new business or comments, um, is next meeting. And Ray and I were talking about the, just asking you guys if uh, an in-person meeting would be preferable or if a hybrid form would be preferable or if you just like the Zoom and we keep it this way. So 
I don't know. Let's, I guess, start with that question and then find a date if that's possible. Does anybody, would anyone prefer an in-person meeting? I, I would enjoy discussion. Discussion. Oh, having one. I'm not sure necessarily the next one, but uh, you know, the Zoom is super convenient, but it also would be great to have at least one where I get to meet some of you folks face to face who I haven't met in person yet. That's right. I, I feel the same way. And also, um, you know, it, it might give us a chance to meet at some of the sites. Like, you know, if we're talking about pickleball, we can go to one of the pickleball sites and talk about that and know exactly what we're looking at. So, okay. So we'll, I, you're right. You're really busy right now. So, um, if you know if anybody else has a strong feeling one way or the other, let's talk about it. Otherwise, continue with Zoom, I guess. Matt. Yeah, I, I find that Zoom is convenient for these evening meetings um, that we have to squeeze around other things. I'm open to doing like a field trip if we could coordinate a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll keep that in mind when we're planning the agenda, I guess, for the next meeting or two. And hopefully before the time, before Yusef and I are gone, we can meet you guys. <laughs> it's nice to know, know you in person for a minute anyway. So, okay. Um, and how about meeting for next, what is this, March? For April, first or second week of April? Second or third week, maybe we're up to now. April the third shows up on the calendar <laughs> if we go by regular. Yeah, our attempt was to get that's soon, right? Especially, soon. For, especially for the three Matt, Sanjay, and Andy. Uh, okay. Uh, well, especially for those three, but for all of us, the question is also: Do we want to stick with Mondays? Um, it sounds like Mondays work for us. Uh, um, yeah, I, me too. I, I wanted to make sure if there are three people who are going to be with us beyond July. If that wasn't good for those three people, then I, that would be that would be a, a, you know, I could certainly look at changing that. But I I like Mondays. The issue, of course, is uh, uh, you know, I sent you the the uh, uh, the notification. The town council has a what is it a uh, 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 a liaison. A liaison from the town council uh, Pat was uh, uh, Pat was expressed regrets that she couldn't make this one. We scheduled it on a Monday that they have a town council meeting. Um, they don't meet every Monday, obviously, and I don't know if they meet on that on that date. We don't have to schedule it so that we avoid town council meetings, but uh, I think that might be it might be good for us to try and make sure that our liaison is not is not uh, prohibited from attending our meetings all the time. So you don't know when that is. Do you want to wait and find out or should we pick a date and check with her? You can pick a date and check with her, I think. If if April 3rd works for us, I say we go April 3rd. That's two weeks. Wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I won't have anything new for you in, eight, in two weeks. Um, do you we want to try four. the end of the, where yeah, are we right let, now? Let, let's try like the third week in April and then maybe to avoid conflict, we could move it a week one way or the other. Does that sound good? Well, April 17th is during the school break. I don't know if that affects anyone. April 17th is the holiday. So we should skip to the next to Monday? If that's the Monday of the break week, then that's Patriots Day. Yeah. Uh, so, so the 24th? 20th. 24th. How's that work for people? Seems all right. Works, works okay. for me. Okay. We'll we can talk on the 24th then. Yep. If if there are any uh, if there are any conflicts that come up, feel free to reach out to Carolyn or myself. Um, I could send you all uh, the emails. I think they're available on our website. I I, uh, I conveniently block you all from the emails on the BCC, but if you all need particularly Carolyn's email address, I can send you email addresses for each other if necessary, just so you have contacts. But if you need to change, uh, if you need to 
uh, if you have a conflict that comes up, you can certainly reach out to myself and or Carolyn. Um, that reminds me, there was one more thing, Andy, that uh, was brought up at the beginning about the minutes. Did you get my email today? I, yeah, I I did. I haven't had a chance to look at anything, but I got an email That's from you, fine. Carolyn. And Ray, I got an email from you as well. There's um, one more. There was one more comment about something that I didn't see. Um, okay. Now I, I'm blocking out on what it was. Who wants to refresh us? Yeah, so it looked like you'd left some uh, paragraphs in there from a CPA. Oh. minutes oh, okay december, near yeah. the top there was something to do with a uh, december minutes approval and i think that was the cpa and then above that i think there was a section about um amy Rusecki being present and i think that was also from the cpa meeting she she was actually present at that meeting oh, she was, she was okay. okay yeah she okay. um she she called so it was just was just just meeting. the minutes then okay I will make that change and as well, Carolyn and Ray looking at your emails. And okay. I'll just email it back um, okay. Ray to you or okay. And then do, do we I, have to approve it somehow or would we approve it next time or was it just go get posted? Anyone know? If if you if you can identify if you both can identify any other changes, we can approve it with the changes. If and then I'll just we can do it this way. Andy, if you send me the the uh, edited minutes, I can share that with everybody and ask for a, for a, I believe that's, Just that's okay. okay. I can ask for everybody to, to uh, accept the minutes. If you send them to me tomorrow, I can, I can get everybody to confirm them over email. Okay. Works. All right. And then we'll watch for the minutes from tonight before the next meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. Carolyn, for, for uh, stepping into the chair. Sure thing. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.